Hello everyone. I'm very happy to give a talk about the topic of microplastics. My work focuses on the aging behaviors of microplastics, especially the critical roles of free radicals. I guess most of audience are familiar about microplastic, so I want to start from free radical. What is free radical? We all know free radical means atomic groups or compounds with unpaired electrons. They might be formed when the cleavage of chemical bond under heating or light. They also be formed by re redox reaction, like the electron gain or loss. Generally. Free radicals are considered as unstable species, which readily react with other molecules. Most free radicals have a short lifetime, like hydroxyl radical. The lifetime is just several nanoseconds. We cannot detect it without trapping agent. Compared to the commonly known transient free radical, the so-called PFR persistent free radicals are much more stable. They have a longer lifespan, from hours to several months. Though they are relatively stable, EPFR may delay decay due to their re re reaction with oxygen under natural conditions which induce the production of RS, reactive oxygen species. This process like a double-edged sword. On one hand, if exposure to EPFR, the ROS generation have a negative effect on organism and human health. On the other hand, the ability for ROS generation can be applied for the degradation or transformation of contaminants. So where is PFR? I, I want to see PFR seem to be everywhere. We can detect it on the particulate matter in air natural organic matter in water, and the superfund side contaminated by some organic contaminants like PCP and PAHS. Formation of EPFR on those environment media always associate with electrical transfer from aromatic compounds to the transition metal on mineral surface. Or they might be formed by redox reaction in some uh, like uh, uh, micromolecular, like uh, organic, natural organic matters, as well as the body cleavage in polymer, like lignin, during the irradiation, heating, or electrolysis. We all know that plastic also are kind of man-made polymer. After entering into the environment, microplastic can be fragmented and weathered by sunlight irradiation, biodegradation, water power, or wind, and decompose it into smaller pieces or particles leading to the significant change of their structure and the physical chemical property. During the aging process, the microplastic will break the covalent bond and form like free radical. If this free radical can be stabilized in the complex network structure of polymer and they may form the EPFR.
as I told above, EPFR can induce a large amount of ROS formation. So the key question is, can photo aged microplastic with EPFR cause greater biological toxicity? On the other hand, if the EPFR, EPFR can induce the formation of ROS, the produced formation may also participate in the transformation of microplastics. Based on above hypothesis, we firstly investigate the potential formation of EPFR on the photo-aged microplastics. Our experiment found that after 50 days of photo aging, strong signal for the persistent radical were detected on the aromatic high polymers like PS and PF, but no signal was found for the PE and the PVC. It suggests that the formation of EPFR has an important important relationship with the molecular structure of microplastics. The microplastic with aromatic rings are more likely to form EPFR. Based on their G factor, we can find that the formed EPFR are mainly oxygen-centered free radicals. We further monitored the evolution of EPFR on the PS microplastics during their photo aging and found that the concentration of the EPFR grandly increased with the increase in irradiation time. Uh, and the EPFR of PF exhibited a similar decay trend with the PF. When the light turned off, EPFR in PF as well as PS saw a similar decay trend. The decay of EPFR of the PF was more rapidly than the PS indicating that the EPFR on PF have a higher reactivity. When we then compare the decay of EPR in natural and anoxic at atmosphere, it found that the absence of the oxygen inhibits the decay of EPFR. It concludes that the oxygen participated the formation and accelerated the decay of EPFR on microplastics. So the question is how the EPFR was formed on the photo-aged microplastics to prompt the potential pathways. The microplastic before and after photo-aged was characterized as shows in these figures, after aging, more oxygen continuum focusing groups are formed on the surface of microplastics, mainly include hydroxyl and carboxyl groups. Meanwhile, the molecular weight of, of the microplastic also decreased, indicating that the Chemical bonds were broken during the photo aging of microplastics. Based on the characterization and the DFT calculation results, we can give a potential pathways for EPFR generated on the microplastics. In case of PS, the carbon-centered free radical were first generated by the uh, photo-induced carbon 
and oxygen bond cleavage, which react which then reacted with oxygen to generate peroxyl radicals. After that, the peroxyl radicals are rapidly transformed by hydrogen abstraction into unstable species like hydroperoxides, which may decompose, decompose into a, another radical. The produce uh, this kinds of uh, oxyl radical may combine with hydrogen atoms to form a hydroxyl foxane groups. Therefore, the, the detected those three kinds of radical may produced on the is the PS. For the PF, uh, we just detect one type of radical is the kind of phenoxyl radical. The those mechanism or participate pathway tell us how the radical was formed on the microplastics. We further investigate the formation of EPFR on nitrogen-containing microplastics as displayed. The photoaging also induces the formation of EPFR on this type of microplastics. And their content also increased with the elapsed aging time. Comparatively, EPFR on PA decayed more rapidly than AMR. And thus, the PA EPFR have a higher reactivity. Similarly, Characterization analysis tell us that nitrogen hydrogen bond breakage and the nitrogen oxygen formed during the photoaging process. And the generated P EPFR can be recognized as a persistent amine. Nocil radicals. Surprisingly, besides ROS, RNS also observed on the irradiated PA. The generated RNS include nitric oxide radical and the nitrogen dioxide radical. In addition, we also observe the formation of other types of radical like CO3 radical. So the next question is can photoaged microplastic with a large amount of EPFR cause greater toxicity? First the OP value can be used to indicate the ability of particles to generate, generate ROS and oxidative stress effect. So we compare the oxidation potential OP levels of microplastic before and after reaction. Our results indicated that the OP value of the photo is the microplastic was significantly increased with the elapsed reaction time. The increase in OP value may be related to the active components generated on the photo agent microplastics. Now, we analyze in detail the change in EPFR, ROS, and other uh, oxygen containing groups on the microplastics after photoaging. 
the correlation analysis show that inorganic comp components on the microplastic, like the uh, metal ions and some uh, other species, have no effect on the enhancement of OP value. But organic carbon groups, EPFR and ROS, were the main contributors for the OP value. The cytotoxicity experiment also found that the photo is the microplastic could cause cell death. We can find the decreased cell variability was accompanied by the increased OP value and ROS level, suggested that the cytotoxicity of PF was correlated with the OP value. Therefore, the oxidative stress may be the main cause of the cell death, and the EPFR and its driven ROS of a microplastics were the main factors causing the cytotoxicity. Using macrophage as a model cell for the experiment, microplastic associated EPFR can trick and points like including the, the decrease of cell variability by about 28 to 45 percent and the increase of oxidative stress response about 46 to 93 percent. Also, we can induce the in inflammatory factor secrecy. The enhancement of microplastic toxicity with the photo H was confirmed to be attributed to the EPFR, which was generated on the microplastic. As I mentioned above, the EPFR induced ROS have a pros and a cause. The produced ROS may also participate in the remediation of organic contaminants. Therefore, I was wondering if the EPFR induced ROS can participate in the photo transformation of the microplastics. So uh, PS was then applied as a model to investigate the photo degradation of microplastics under simulated solar light for as long as 115 days. The SEM images illuminate that the Princeton PS have a smooth surface. However, after two months of light irradiation, the PS experience a significant morphological change and became shade-like. With obvious cracks forming on the surface. After light irradiation time prolonged to five months, a large number of PS freaks appeared with multiple cracks. Meanwhile, the particle size of the aged PS decreased from 115 micrometer to 93 after two months. 
and the fielder decreased to 52 after five months. Those results demonstrated that sunlight irradiation can cause the breakdown of the PS particles. Campanial index CI is commonly used to indicate the aging degree of plastics. The value of CI increased from 0 0.04 to 0 0.014 after two months of light irradiation and further increase to 0 0.33 after five months, suggesting that light irradiation induces the generation of the oxygen containing foxen groups on PS, like the route of FTIR. Meanwhile, we also detected the EPFR formed on the PS. Those results further demonstrated that the bond cleavage and the free radical formation on the photolizard PS. Not surprisingly, a lot amount of ROS was detected in the PS suspension and the accumulative concentration also increased with the elapsed reaction time and the yield of ROS significantly correlated with the EPFR content suggesting that the EPFR play an important role in formation of ROS also in water. Similar relationship was also observed between different ROS species like hydroxyl radical and superoxide radical and the, the oxygen peroxide and the superoxide radical. The opposite the observed the obtained results suggest that PS bond EPFR react with oxygen uh, via electron transfer. They can yield superoxide radical, which further accept an electron to form hydrogen peroxide. The generated Hydrogen peroxide was decomposed to hydroxyl radical by photophoto-like reaction or was activated by the EPFR. To further test the rule of ROS in formation of in the transformation of PS, various types of Quincher for ROS was added into reaction system, and so the press the prevalence press of ROS quincher significantly influenced the microplastic agent. Compared with the system without quinchers addition, the mean particle size and the molecular weight of PS increased and the CI value decreased. The information suggests that ROS participate in the aging of microplastics, and their concentration followed under of this. Hydroxy radical is higher than superoxide radical and higher than singlet oxygen. In addition, the aged PS were also persist, per, dispersed and settled down more slowly than the 
original PS microplastics. That can be attributed to that the photo chemical reactions induce the formation of more surface foxin groups on PS, resulting in enhanced surface negative charges and slower aggregation and sedimentation. Overall, the ROS changed the surface foxin groups of PS and then improved their stability and mobility in water. In addition, water components may also impact photoaging connectives and mechanism of PS via ROS. For example, the inorganic anions promoted the PS agent during the photo, photo, photo degradation. And they also follow the order like this. And these annuals affect the indirect photo agent of PS by regulating hydrogen peroxide, hydroxide radical concentration. In above research, we get following clues. The photo agent induces the production of EPFR on microplastics. Their type, abundance, and stability were directly related to the molecular structure of microplastics. And the active components formed on the photoagent microplastics like EPFR and ROS can lead to the enhancement of cytotoxicity. On the other hand, the formation of ROS by irradiated microplastics play a very important role in their transformation. And further impact the stability, mobility, and the fate of microplastics in water. And the water geochemistry, like anions, cations, and DOM, may also influence the generation of ROS. Weights further participate in the photoagent of microplastic under light irradiation. The above information can be found in those published papers. And finally, thank you for your attention, and I would like to appreciate our group and the foundation for this work. Thanks.